these were kind of things that um, came up as we was going through the budget process and meeting with the department heads and stuff like that. Um, some of them were, I guess, the, well, the vehicle and equipment use policy was from Brian, and then the overtime provision was Brian. Um, the on-call pay was Shane and sort of Dylan because he had that ro he started that rotating schedule where somebody every weekend had to be here, stay put, to be on call. Um, vacation leave upon separation, that'd be Liz leave. And then phew, the health insurance part is mine. And that's, I've got an email out to um, Diana, or Diane Jeffers at the school government, trying to figure that out. I did a bunch of research on it, and it's, once you've got that in place, it's hard to change, but we've got a, we've got a problem because in several sections, we give employees the right after retirement, either at our expense or partially our expense or them 100% to buy into our group plan. Well, now that we're with the state, the agreement we have with the state has a specific provision that no retirees can join yeah. in. So we've got to figure out what we can do and what we can't do on that one. Um, so I'm hoping she'll be able to give me some guidance. I just put some stuff in. You know, I, I did find I did find um, an article where the federal court said you could ask employees when they reach 65, retirees when they reach 65, you know, to go off your health plan, go on to Medicare, and then either purchase the supplement or not purchase the supplement. I mean, we've been doing that, but it's not in our policy yeah. to do it. Now, mine I can take with me, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, they can just change that they bill you instead right. of putting it on ours. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's just a sub. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, which if we could, that would limit our exposure because right now everybody could retire at fifty if they had twenty years in, and we've got a big batch in the next eight to ten years that yeah. will be. How many yeah, all together, like, like 10? Yeah, it's yeah. like a fourth of our workforce is like seven or eight, I think. Which so most people... Well, now Gerald will drop off that. So. Yeah, Gerald will drop off. So and he is quitting. Yeah, he's going to do his thing. What's he going to do? He's going to be an SRO with the schools, which my really understanding is that. that the county was taking that back, like the county was taking that program over. Mm -hmm. And the schools will be... <coughs> Hello, Shane Dale. That's Shane Dale. How are you? Tired. No doubt. 32 hours in by this morning at 3 a.m. So. Oh, is that all? Is that yes. all? Huh. Well, I don't know what, what to tell you. Just, you need He's a little sleep. He's working on yeah. You need a little sleep. We, um, I think I got what I needed from Ricky to prepare this letter. I told him last night, so, or this well, morning, whatever it was. Whenever it was. Hello, I guess the crew's here now. Sorry I'm late. I mean, with a guy about a manufacturer home dealership. Oh, really? Yeah. What about a uh, small house community? <laughs> Or, yeah. That does make me A new development. Whoa. Are we streaming this? Yes. Okay. I'd like to well, know I guess. say anything inappropriate. Judy, you're the chair. Chair. Go, Judy. So you could call us all to order. 
I will call us to order. Okay, so. And turn it over to Heather. Yeah. Well, so as we start going through the budget uh, process, um, we had a couple of things. Um, we had a couple things kind of come up with the personnel policy, um, and I, I mean, Brian, do you want to talk about Here one and three? Okay. Um, if you want to turn to page 11, we can just start there on the, it's good to see you, you can share, we'll just, page 11 which talks about comp time, right? Uh, how about how about well, no, yeah. if you go up to the, go up to the top of the page okay. there. Yeah. So we'd be 10, starting on 10. We've got overtime pay provision. Yeah. It's talking about okay. giving comp time. Can we start there and just work our way through? Yeah, I mean, if you just want to start there. All right. So with that, during our uh, employee evaluations, I had a request that I didn't expect. An officer asked me about the possibility of, instead of earning overtime for time he had over, if he could volunteer to have that as comp time because he didn't have a lot of comp time earned. And he thought that would be better for his situation at the time. And I told him I didn't know what that possibility was, whether we could work that out. Our, our policy had always just been to pay the overtime. So I think this was uh, looking toward a solution for if they wanted to volunteer for that to allow them to, instead of being paid out for overtime, to have that accrued as comp time that they'd have to take within a year, is that? Well, yeah, that and what we had, currently what we have, if you look on the top of page 11, is non-exempt employees who work in SFS, the required hours, um, will receive comp time at a rate of one and a half hours for each overtime worked above 40 hours. Um, it's police. different, for, and for police, it's 171 hours, and they just get straight time. Is that correct? They get straight time from 160 to 171, and then over 171 is a time and a half. Right. And so... It said, then when you go down to paragraph two there, it says, you know, with the exception of law enforcement officers, employees can get no more than 80 hours of comp time. Law enforcement officers can accrue up to 20 hours of comp time, and they have to use it within 30 days. So the officer that talked to Brian was interested in having a longer period to use there so maybe they could bank it they didn't have as much I guess vacation time they could bank it and mm -hmm. use it as part of their vacation time later on in the year and I didn't really understand Brian and I had a conversation about how come there was a difference between how many hours law enforcement got versus how many hours a regular employee could get and why couldn't we just make it easy and make everybody be able to accrue the same amount of time and have the same amount of time to use it up. And he did not think that there was anything that was about that 20 hours and 30 days other than maybe a scheduling situation. But since you have reserves anyway, yeah, no, it wouldn't I, be. I, I, that's, when that was established, that's my only thinking is someone was thinking, well, we don't want to have officers accruing a bunch of time then all of them taking uh, um, time at the yes. same time. It's, it's, it's the only, and again, we only have currently one officer that's kind of in a situation. If we hire, you know, we've got an open position now, so we may have another one soon, but we, it, was, it wouldn't be the whole part. Most guys would rather just get the pay, but if it was a volunteer that they could take advantage of that, some of them might take advantage of that of having uh, the additional time. And I think we would probably need to have uh, like a little written agreement that they would sign saying they were agreeing to comp time in lieu of overtime yeah. pay. Um, but we thought. So in number one there, we were just thinking about amending it to say, you know, it, all employees can accrue up to 40 hours. They got to use within a year. Yeah, and I don't know where we came up with that 30 days. 
I don't know either. Like very long. We were both on that group, and I don't, yeah. I don't really know where that came from either. I, I, either. I feel like that was something that was already there, and we just carried over, because I don't know that that yeah. was necessarily a conversation we had. Um, and then, you know, so we would just take out that middle paragraph about law enforcement and how many hours they could get and just replace it with any non-exempt employee could get up to 40 hours of comp time um, and have to use it within a year from the yeah. date they earned it. Um, and then it says, you know, in this third paragraph in that section, you know, that they have to schedule it in advance with their supervisor. Um, and you know, it can't, uh, has to be at the convenience so as not to cause an undue hardship. Yeah. So, I, I think we can probably work that out. Um, Shane, so, you have any problem with that? No, you think your guys would have any problem with that? They probably don't use a lot of the comp time either, do they? Okay, so then, we have the next provision on page 11 there is that callback, and that's if primarily the crew because pretty much everybody else, every other department except for administration has somebody working um, on the weekends, working a shift. But Dylan had set up a rotating schedule where every weekend somebody was on call meaning they had to stay in the vicinity of the town, but we didn't really have anything in writing about where they had to be. And there was, I think, you know, some questioning from employees wanting to know, hey, could we get compensated for basically giving up our weekend and having to sit at home by the phone if we did get a call? Um, this amount that we put in for the weekend would actually, if they were on call from the time town hall, hall closes on Friday until it opened back up the following Monday morning, that's less than $2 an hour. We did build a little bit into the budget for that. Um, so I'm gonna let Shane just say, you know, how he thinks that, that would work out or what he anticipates, just keeping with the same rotation that. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, the only thing that I see there is that gives them a little something to hang around for. I mean, at some point in time, we're going to get caught with our pants down, everybody and their brother's going to be gone, and there might be one person left around, and it's like, well, I don't know where these vibes are. Yeah. yeah. It just keeps somebody there. I mean. I think the problem, there was also a problem that Dylan apparently was having, which is why he did this, was that, you know, Maybe the call would, well, it was always rolling to him, and he was, you know, every weekend. Then if he was gone somewhere, he'd be trying to find somebody. And this way, whoever is the assigned person, we can set up the phones at Town Hall that it'll roll directly to them. So we can do that. We can, we can do that. Can, yeah, can well, we? Well, I don't know where there's the money. Brian. Or uh, I turned it over to Chad. Oh, did you? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the guy that's supposed to do that, I was never able to get a hold of him. So I got in on the Verizon website and did it myself. Oh, really? And Sweet. I haven't tried it. I keep meeting late one night to try it and see if I can get the options. And all I did was switch out going to me and his number. Okay. So all everything else should be exactly the same. So we'll just need to, if we did sure. this, we just need to know who the young call person was. Thank you, Brian. On call person was so that Chad, you know, by Friday afternoon, so that he could do the switch right. before he leaves on Friday. Yeah, it's easy to update if that worked. I mean, if that's, you know, if that's something, I guess the committee needs to decide if it's something, this is something to bring forth to the council. Please do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for. So what does everybody think on that? Well, I, I have no problem with it. Uh, I don't know that the council would have a problem with it. What do you think? Do we need to take it? Would 
they're going to have to approve all They'll have to anyway. approve all of them anyway. So. This is a bill recommendation. Right. Yeah. They'll yeah. have to read it. Have I'm to sure read they'll it have now. questions. Yeah. Yeah. But. Some of them. Some might. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then. Why don't we just go through them and then at the end we can vote to say we these are the recommendations we'll put forward. All right. Okay. Can we go to the next? Go to the next one. All right. The next one we discussed uh, a week or two ago. I don't That's remember. On page about the vehicle use policy and amending that to uh, um, what page is it on? Twenty three. Twenty three. Thank you. Oh, uh, went right to it. So. Uh, Again, we already have a, a basically a take home policy allowing what they can or can't do, but this was the thoughts of expanding that to the patrol officers, uh, allowing them that, but also setting in a policy with regards to how far they could take it and, and if they lived outside of that radius as a take home benefit, putting in a policy of what that, uh, of a payroll deduction uh, for that. Uh, what we had come up with was about a 25 mile radius that seems to be a standard from for every department that i talked to and uh, beyond that would be 20 cents a mile it would be a payroll deduction the employee would have to agree to that and our, our language initially said uh it wasn't agreement it was arrangement some yeah. sort of commuting arrangement so we came up with a commuting agreement that basically just states all the things that are in this policy to make sure that they understand the vehicle can only be used to and from home, can't be driving kids and family members around in the vehicle. All those things that are in that policy are in that agreement along with a section where they can check I live within 25 miles or I live outside 25 miles and then understanding that when I'm signing this, the, the distance beyond the 25 miles I, I live per shift that I'm scheduled to work will be deducted uh, as a payroll deduction for the benefit. And the only other thing that I didn't put in here that I kind of thought about, because I know we had somebody who worked for another jurisdiction who would leave their vehicle at our, mm -hmm. on our premises so they would be within that mileage. I don't want them to do that. If mm -hmm. they're going to take the car home, the car has to be with them. Yeah. They're responsible for it. And that always want it left at the county line because, you know, then it gets vandalized yeah. or stolen or something like that and I don't know that that wouldn't be a problem with our insurance if we tried to make a claim and just as a side note I think I said this that I've had three conversations about our upcoming open position all three officers that I've had a conversation with that's one of the questions they've asked is do you have take home cars it is a very important benefit to some so where the where the council decide to to go forward that I think that'd be a positive thing for both uh, recruitment and retaining employees. Have uh, you talked to Fields? Because he lives the farthest away. He does, and this is that. This was the actual. We, we discussed him about what would be fair, mm -hmm. and this this kind of came out that you know he's I he would certainly be willing to pay this amount. Uh, didn't know if he'd pay a whole lot more than that, but he seemed like a fair amount to him, uh, and something he was certainly willing to participate in. Okay. Lizzie, is there anything with regards to the payroll or anything that would make that weird for well, you? I'm problem? just going to have to figure out. That's why I was writing in for me to figure out next month how to process that. Um, and my thoughts were it would, and that's what I, the conversation I had with him. Like, he, even if he works extra shifts or even if he has vacation, there's just a set amount. You're scheduled to work this number of days. This is the amount you're going to deduct it. If you work extra, you got a little extra driving the car. If you took a vacation, the car sat at your house and you didn't, you know what I'm saying? It's not changing month to month and week to week. It's this amount for that amount, unless he moves. If yeah. he moves closer, then it might change. But just a month to month type thing. Because so, I said it's too hard to keep up with exactly yeah. how many shifts you work yeah. and that kind of thing. It would just be the shifts that you're scheduled to work normally within a 28 day period or whatever that would be. That would be the amount that you would be. We just have a set amount. Yeah, because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how it's going to how it's gonna flow and all I can do is I'll have to figure that out. Okay. So, I've got a while for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, is 25 miles usually? That's uh, Weaverville, uh, Buncombe, I think, is 25 as well. Uh, that's why you see sometimes vehicles, you see vehicles at the shed because they live just beyond, because they, did, they didn't have this extra, uh, Weaverville didn't have this extra provision. That's why you'd see a Weaverville car at the shed. Uh, 
there's was 25 miles. It's, uh, it's, it seems to be a standard for, for most of the places that I've, I've found. So how far is the next standard? Uh, 40. Uh, I figured it up one time. It will wind up being about, uh, what is it, $40 a week-ish. Randall did the math on it. I, I want to say it was right at $40 a week. And he said it was well worth it. Oh, yeah. To do that. Well, and it's probably better on the cars. Yeah, and it, it does get the cars out and, and driven some, uh, you know. Like I say, it's just a... I bet you thought I was going to fuss about that. I, I've, I've known you for a lot of years now, and I'm trying to wonder who has possessed your body. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> Old age. <laughs> All right. All right. So, and there's somewhere in here we had... <coughs> where was the one? Where was the part about the police? Not the what? Yeah, on page twenty-three. I was trying to look. I tried to find it. I didn't see it. <coughs> about the approved commuters and what they. But what? there was something about police were not. Was there not? Police were not what? Allowed to take the car home. No. They okay. just, we just had a, approved commuters, and the, the, the regular patrol has just never been an approved commuter. Okay. Okay. So, like, Shane's guys could be an approved commuter. Yeah, this same thing. Somebody that needed any, to take a vehicle yeah. home. Any, any department. And they all fall within the 25 miles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, your guys fall within the 25 miles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Next, Leslie, was this explained to everybody. Yeah. All right. So just thinking about how we can save some money. Um, you know, when you're retired, you get this pay out of your vacation. It's usually, you know, less than 40 hours. So six weeks. So what we were thinking we'd do is to reduce that to four weeks. And that way, that's like a whole, I mean, that's a whole pay period that you're shifting down to the state to pay. You know, to me, that just it's 15 under the $2,000 range. So when you think about everybody over a course of a period of time, you know, that doesn't mean that you, you still accrue the four weeks. It's not changing with anything with the way that you accrue or you do. Um, I figure Ricky will have a stroke because he'll want to take it all this year so he don't, <laughs> he don't roll over. Um, but Anyway, it's just and that's on a calendar year, not a fiscal yeah, year, right? So we would want year. that to start like January first of next year. Yeah, January first of twenty two. So I mean and that So how it works time. then is that that time gets pushed over to sick, to sick time, time. Yes. and then it when you retire does the state pay that out, or it just they moves just you close? Yeah. 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 It just moves you closer. It just gives you two weeks like what you'd have worked. So. so it moves you closer to being able to retire. It just means we don't have to pay out the two weeks while you're still in the past. <laughs> so. Wow. Like, that. Um, it was just an easy way to save a few dollars. And, I mean, out. honestly, we can't really take four weeks. And, you know, I mean, you, I don't think you're going to be able to. <laughs> Ricky might can. He's going to. But, it's, I mean, it's hard. Shane would just like to have a little time off. Yeah. yeah. Shane would just like to have, like, a solid 24 hours. I'd like to have 48 weeks or 75 yeah. or 50. Yeah. Or yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. That is 70, yeah. 80, 90. Um, we're getting there. Yeah. Maybe. So, maybe if. Since we're into it this year so far, then maybe we should, you know, let them know first of next year, and then say this is how it's going to be. Yeah. So they don't lose the time. Yeah. And in the end, they're compensated for it because of the sick. Yeah. It moves over to their sick. Yeah. So your thoughts are this January keeping the 240 and changing it after this January? That's what Just I'm making thinking. sure. I, I mean, know. that's what I'm thinking. Because I'll be asked. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I mean, we're almost halfway through this year, so that would put, I mean, not, not to say anything bad, but just saying Ricky will try to take it out, and you can't handle any more right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the Fallon's not, you know, 
We don't know. We don't know. So this way it gives, we need to, we need to tell, we need to tell everybody that it's coming and give them a chance to take it. But, but this okay. is how it's going to go. So. Okay. Chad, any thoughts? No, I never get quotes on any of that anymore. I just like to include everybody in the folks. So. Well, you can now. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to do that soon. So, and I mean, this would be something I think we would need to maybe like have a meeting with the employees and let them know. Do you see any issue with your guy? I mean, I know Ricky has been mentioned, but do you see any other that may have heartburn over that? In my opinion, I really don't see nothing to have heartburn over. I don't either. You, you don't lose any time. Yeah, you know, it's not like you're earning I mean, less. You just can't carry you're over. You're just not much. rolling over as much. Right. Okay. okay, so when were we thinking about this being implemented? Okay. I mean, are you okay with that? It's just like we're halfway through this year. So, so January would what? I would say we let them know and that we only we don't start it till January twenty twenty three. Okay. The truth, because I don't think we've got anybody that's going to retire between now and twenty twenty three. Yeah. What about twenty twenty two? Well, that just gives you six months to be able to take this extra two weeks if they, you know, if some of them have a hard time with it, because it's on the calendar. I just don't want it to put anybody in a hard spot with other people trying to take their time. Mm -hmm. Particularly that one I just said. Yeah, I understand. Um, since we're short staffed at the end. Well, I'm good with 2023. So. I mean, are you okay with that, Heather? That yeah. way yeah. we can just let them know. I mean, there won't be anybody working on it. Anybody else? I say I've got I've only got a couple guys I would even apply to and I just want to give them notice that it's going to, it is going to change yeah. whatever that notice is if it's six months it's a year six months whatever it's about now. That's what we need is reserve water operators. Yeah. It's hard to shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I, I've got thoughts on that, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Then if you go to page. 52. <coughs> Other post employment benefits. First thing, I think the title should read be changed to post retirement health insurance benefits because that's all it talks about. There are no others, it's just health insurance. Um, and each and every one of these, you know, different provisions, references retiring from the town and um, after completion of the different milestones. So for whatever reason, we're stuck on 12 and 20. I don't know why 12 is the magic number, but it is. Um, one of the issues, and the reason this has come up um, is because in looking at the memorandum of understanding that we have with the state in order to be on the state's health care plan, it, it will not allow us, it prohibits us from offering anybody who's retired the option of staying with the plan. The state has moved all of their new hires. Once they're finished working, they don't receive any kind of post-retirement health benefits. And so they're not allowing any of the local governments that have gotten local bills like we did to get into their plan to be able to do that either. So we have a couple of provisions in here. Um, and I don't know why, because we, what, the first part, I don't know why we have that at all, because we, we clearly state that the town of Burnsville should not provide any health insurance benefits after retirement or separation from employment with the town of Burnsville for any employee or their dependents if the employee was hired on or after March 5th, 2015. All employees hired on or after that day will be provided the option of group um, health insurance coverage with the town as set forth in the personnel policy only for the term of their employment with the town, however long that may be. 
when you go up here to the first sentence, then it says employees retiring under local government employees retirement system, which is your 50 and 20. Um, with less than 12 years of service from the town of Burnsville can participate in the town's group health plan with the employee paying all the premiums. Well, I guess that's just to give, you know, people who hadn't worked here 12 years that were eligible to retire the option of, you know, staying on with the plan if they wanted to pay for it, but they can't stay on with the plan. So we're going to have to figure out if that can be, my recommendation would that would be just be repealed because I don't think we have anybody. If you were hired at, after March 5th, 2015, you don't have 12 years yet, but I don't think we have anybody that's retirement age either in that group. Um, and then it, the next provision is employees hired prior to March 5th, 2015, so before, and retiring after 12 years of service with the town. May participate in the town's group health plan with the employee and the town each paying 50%. There again, we've got a problem because we can't, they can't participate in the current plan that we have. All right, and then the town, um, a Barnesville shall provide health insurance for employees hired before March 5th, 2015 and retiring with 20 years of creditable service with the town of Barnesville at no cost to the employee. So, um, I did a lot of research on this. If your policy is passed by resolution, there is case law, current case law that says it that kind of policy passed by resolution as opposed to being an ordinance does not give any employee a property right in their employment, meaning they're an at-will employee, it doesn't create a contract. We have language about that in the front of this. However, and I assume that also would include any retirement benefits, but that's not the case. There's other case law that says, no, once you entice somebody to work for you for a period of time in order to get a retirement benefit, if they work that period of time, then you have to give them the benefit and you can't change it. So I have sent an email, a long detailed email to Diane Jeffress, who's an employment law specialist at the School of Government and she's also uh, very, um, uh, she's also a specialist with health coverage issues for local government employees. I'm hoping she's going to respond back to me as to what we can and cannot do. The main thing, I mean, I, I think when we're looking at a situation where the employee is basically having to buy their own insurance, the one that's been here for less than 12 years, but they can just choose to buy into ours, I think we should just take that option off because now we have the Affordable Care Act and they probably are going to get a better deal, Seriously. you know, Seriously. buying it that way. Um, anyway, so I'm going to, I've asked her, can that just be repealed? And because they're having to pay all of all the premium anyway, but they can't pay it with our health. Plan. So I don't know that we have to buy or we have to somehow find them a health plan and then manage it and all that kind of stuff. It just seems like it'd be much easier since they're paying for it 100%. They just figured that out on their own. Then the 50%, those hired before March 5th, 2015, that, have, that retire after they've had 12 years, again says can participate in the group health plan we need to figure out yeah it probably needs to say something like just the town of burns will provide coverage right with the employee reimbursing 50 percent right that that's more what we're actually doing yeah, yeah. um and then for those that have retired in 20 years it, and it, it references credit, credible service, and we don't really have a definition for creditable service. Most places define that as continuous 
service with the town for that period of time. And so, I, you know, I was, I'm proposing, if we can change this, that, you know, we have a de definition and everybody, however long they're supposed to stay to get these benefits, it's creditable service, meaning that it's a continuous employment with the town as opposed to, you know, work for the town and then not work for the town and then go work for somebody else and do we typically say if you had a law enforcement officer that went from another for their retirement they can combine mm -hmm. I know they ran into this in Buncombe County where they had some employees who mistakenly retired too early <laughs> um, and the, the worry was with special separation that they were going to go to another agency and work for whatever that six months or one year and then come back to the county and say okay well now you're on the hook for all of our special separation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the definition of creditable service kind of does make a difference and I think there was a um, an opinion from the Attorney General's office that said, you know, you could make it say, you know, it has to be with us in order to get the benefit. Um, so, so do you do you just want to change that up here where it says and retiring from the town instead of after the completion of twelve years, like that kind of thing? Well, it says here, employees hired and retiring after completion of 12 years of service with the town. I mean, that to me, I, I mean, we can, make, we can make the changes in that wording, but I mean, to me, it's saying, yeah. you've completed 12 years of service with the town, you've retired from the town, not, not. from somewhere else. Um, but we definitely can, you know, change that. Um, how does it work with, say you retire 20 years, you actually work 19, you go to your sick time. Is that credible? Yes, okay. yes. Credible yes. Sick time. But you can't afford your time. fee. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's always that fee. There's always that 50. But yes, <laughs> you can. And I think that our, it makes sense to me that this health insurance coverage, if we're allowed to do it, make the changes which I still got to figure all that out. That it that it matches up with the retirement, the state retirement pension benefits, meaning fifty and twenty. You know, because Yeah. Yeah. You can't retire and get your pension until you're fifty. Um so I think there needs to be some language about that in there. And we've already got people who were hired after March 5th, 2015. They're not getting any post health insurance, post retirement health insurance. So I don't know. I think the first one makes. You would have had to been hired after that to get to, you know, be less than 12 years. Um, hmm. What's the other thing I was going to mention? Service. We don't have this in here with retired employees participating in the vision and dental group plans. We don't have anything in that, but they do, correct? Yeah, they do. So they can do that. So I think we need to have something in there. And then the biggest, the biggest change is requiring employees who retire that they will be on health insurance coverage that we will provide for them until age 65 or whenever the age is that they're eligible for Medicare. And then at that point, they enroll in Medicare and we pick up their supplement. Yeah, and that's what we do now. 
Um, we do it, but it's not in in the policy anywhere. And I found, um, I, I researched, and you can do that. Um, my question to Ms. Jeffers was, if we've not had it in our policy, can we now change it and require people who are going to be retiring in the next, what, eight to ten years when you've got most, a larger group? And to tell you the truth, if it's enough of us, you know, we might could actually get a small group plan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we want everybody yeah. to be covered. That's that's the main thing. But, you know, if they can't, if my other thing was, what if we can't find a plan as good as, you know, what the state is for the same price? I mean, can we say we will, can, or could we give the employee the money to get the plan, you know, of their choice at that point, since they can't go into the, the state group plan. Do we have to buy another group plan, or do we, can we give them the money directly for, not necessarily give it to them, but them tell us who to pay it to. What's the best way to structure it so that they're taken care of? But you know, I don't want them to. I just don't want there to be a problem when people start retiring and they think we're going to get on the state, stay on the state plan, and they can't. Yeah. So really, this one is like premature at this point because I really thought we could change it and structure it that way. And then when I started researching it, I was like, no, you can't. Maybe you can, but I need the advice from this person to tell me how to word it so that it's okay. Well, you want to take it out or you want to leave it? Well, I'm thinking we'll thing? take it out. Let me, I'm just going to leave it right now for how it is. Y'all can look at it and see. If you think, um, you know, if you've got questions about it, and then when I get my response back from her, I'll let y'all know. Okay. Or she may say. Because my, I wish I'd printed off my copy of my email that I sent to her. She'll pride herself. I'm not reading this email. It's too long. But, mm. but I mean, I ask, you know, so what do we do? We've, we've gotten our policy that they're entitled to this benefit post retirement, but we don't have we don't have a plan that we say we have in the policy that we can put them on now. Yeah, and I mean at that point you just need to probably let even work on it. And I'm getting you know I'm getting an individual plan or a group plan. Right. You know we could ask them. Well, because, I mean, you can get some good plans in the marketplace, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's... If we can give people options to do that, if they want to. Of course, then you may run into, if you had some, you may run into that issue where if the person has a spouse that ha has access to employer insurance. I don't think you're not, you're not supposed to be able to get it through the marketplace. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, there may be people who say, it's, I'll get a better plan, it'd be better for me, less hassle to mm -hmm. go on my spouses, you know? Then can we provide them with the whatever? But we need to know for budgeting purposes, sure. where, you know, yeah. what it's gonna be. Yeah, I mean, and that is why we're trying to fund the OPEB. So, um. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Corbin is coming. Mm -hmm. He'll be here in a minute. He'll come in way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that we could tell us. Dave Smith 
Well, she's going to tell me legally what we can do. They're going to tell us practically, practically what we can do, yeah. you know, what's feasible. Yeah, and they're already so familiar with their structure on how it works and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. I just want this policy to match with whatever it is we can do, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. that somebody can't come back and say, well, now it says in the policy this. Yeah. I mean, I mean if it should just say provide health care coverage, just period. Yeah. So, rubber meets the road. I, I like in two and a half years or so, three years, I'm not sure exactly, uh, Brandon Bid will retire. What? Hey. Oh, hey, the, I, I have an officer who lives with Robert. His <laughs> wife works for the school system, right? Mm -hmm. So, would that mean we would pick up a separate policy because he couldn't be on the state policy? That's what we're trying or to is figure there out. What they're going to let us, what they would let us, okay. how we can set up our policy to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, obviously we'll have to provide coverage. Yeah. It's, it's just, just what's the parameters of that? Right. Do we have to go out and find another group policy? I got you and put this whole group of employees in a group policy, or do we have to find an individual policy, and does that policy have to be the same as what the employees have? Can we say when you get 65 or whatever year, whatever they move it to, because they're talking about lowering it, that you become Medicaid eligible, that you will no longer receive group coverage or individual coverage, but we will pay your supplement gotcha. once you're enrolled, which gets you 100% coverage, and it's actually better coverage. Than it's kind of what we're doing now, right? right? It has been what we've done, but it's never been part of the policy. And the way I'm reading the law, the case law on this, it's whatever is in the policy, and if you don't have that spelled out, then you can't do it. I know if you have a current employee that's 65, you can't say, hey, current employee, get off of our health insurance plan and enroll in Medicare if they're working. You're allowed to do that if they're retired, but the problem, well, not the problem, the challenge is, or the question is, since some people, those that have already worked 12 years, are vested to get at least 50% paid, can we then come back and say, change it, change the plan, and yeah. say, well, when you get 65, because it's supposed to be for life. When you get 65, you enroll in Medicare or whatever program there is, and we will pay the supplement. Okay. And that's what I don't know if we can, because right now, Legally, the governing board could change anything about a current employee's, you know, they could change plans, structures, whatever, options, that sort of thing. They could take things away for current employees. Once an employee has reached whatever this, the milestone that this policy says, they have vested in their retirement benefit. Okay, so if you've got some, we've got some out there who's already worked 20 years, then they're vested in this provision that says if you were hired before March 5th, 2015, and you've got 20 years upon retirement, you will get health coverage for life. 100% paid for by the county. So, like your guy couldn't go to the marketplace, though, because he has access to coverage through. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, would it be more affordable to, for us to reimburse him or her for that coverage, and we don't know if we can do that or not, or right. him and his separate entity? Right. Or would it be better for everybody, or would we be required to? Um, I mean, I think an employee could negotiate, possibly. I think that would be okay. A different structure. 
you know, like the people who have said, hey, guess what, it's better for me to enroll in Medicare and yet y'all pay the supplement and I'm covered 100% and I've got better coverage than what I would have otherwise, yeah. otherwise if we went out and had to buy my policy. And that seems to be the way it's worked. They, the coverage is there. There's no co-pays if it's not a deductible or that for the sub. But it is a big thing because this OPEB number keeps coming up in our audit and screwing up. It's making it look like we're not in the black, and we are in the black in our operating expenses because it's saying, uh, well, you have to put in there if every single person retired tomorrow, yeah. how much it would cost the town and show that as a liability. Even though, A, we know every single person is not going to retire tomorrow and every single person that's working for the town may not make it to retirement. They may resign or get fired or whatever. Um, but we still have to carry that as a liability. So the better handle we get on what that's actually gonna be at some point, the more we can plan for it and budget for it. And their number is covering the retirees at like $40,000 a year that we have. But it will just be that that group of us that's going to be expensive from 50 to 65, you know. So that's why we're trying to save. Yeah, because we'll have so. money put aside to pay those benefits when, they're, when it's time rather than having to have it done that year. Because that'll be a big, a big group. And I do think it's smart once we get response back from her and figure out what we can and can't do, maybe we even have them come and even and do, they need, it needs to be explained to the employees. We need to figure out how we're gonna make it work and then they definitely need to come out. I think it's legal, the most options we have, whether it be reimbursement for them going over a family plan or whatever, the more options we can have, the better up. We would be it's just a matter of whether we can legally do that or not. yeah and also how we account for it I mean part of it I mean some of these things like this provision that says that an employee a retired employees dependents can continue coverage on our plan for three years if they pay the entire premium after that retired employee passes away and that's one thing I think we need to take yeah. out well, I mean, we just, just because the state, when we went there, it changed that. There's just yeah. no way that, that you can't make that happen. So then we're going to have to find policies that we're going to have to manage mm -hmm. for three years for somebody who, you know. Well, even we'll manage it, we'll just be responsible for the late installment. Right. But, I mean, even with that, there's situations, I mean, most of the time, if, if someone passes away and they have young dependents, then that's gonna qualify them for, you know, Social Security benefits and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Which is much better coverage. I mean, there's no yeah, deductibles, there's no, and around here, everybody takes those. You know, it's not. Yeah. I mean, because when you start dishing out eighty dollars of a specialty visit every time you go, that's a lot of money. Well, yeah, exactly. So they probably would rather have the Medicaid because they're like three dollars or nothing. Yeah, and you get free braces. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Really um, nice. So, I just want everybody to be aware this is something we're going to have to figure out and get it, get it right in our policy with what we're actually able to do. Um, you know, this part here, too, about the, you know, certified disability. 
that even really a term? A certified disability. Would I mean, because if somebody gets disability benefits, then again, yeah. they automatically get enrolled in Medicare, and mm -hmm. then it's like we can, you know, pay a supplement, but. Yeah. And I don't know that, you know, I've been here a long time. I don't know that I had any expectation we would do anything other than Medicare once I qualify, you know, once I retire and qualify. I think that's most guys' expectation. That's what they, even though it's not necessarily written right in that Bible, right. that's their understanding. Well, apparently it was a big deal. There were many lawsuits that were filed when places went that. to that because oh, yeah. they considered it age discrimination. Sure. But they have finally, the EEOC has finally issued an exception saying that it's not for, but you can't do it for somebody who is still working, but you can for, but there again, we've got people who were already vested up to the 50% part, and I just don't know if we can change mm. that afterwards. No. No. I know it's not allowed, but I can see some heartburn over the changing plans once you retire what that level of benefit will be if we have to go get a different plan, it sounds like we do. Yeah. Yeah. I know there'll be some heartburn over that from the beginning. Yeah. 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 But that's, it is the way You know, it, I mean, I would like for us to be able to put a provision in here that says that we would use our best efforts to find something as comparable as we can. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, when you're talking about insuring somebody for the rest of their life, I mean, who knows what that's going to look like in 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, if we go to some kind of a public option nationally that says everybody can get on like they have in every other country in the world. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, the federal government may take the, the insurance <coughs> piece away from private employers or public employers and then they say we've got a national health I mean I don't know but obviously you can't really guarantee somebody it's going to always be exactly the same mm -hmm. you know because right now we have to finagle around to get it to the 80-20 because the state plan for their employees is 70-30 with an option, but the board said we'll, we'll go to 80-20 and cover that. Yeah. We appreciate that. <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. Yeah. Well, I think oh, it's yeah. very important for people to have health insurance. Yeah. So I don't ever, I don't ever want people to not have to go with that. Back. I, I appreciated the 80-20, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it is important. So but I think some of this stuff is just, you know. Needs to be worked on. Needs to be worked on and needs to be more, you know, where people can understand and that they can read this and know what they're actually gonna be getting. Cause this just says the town's group health plan and we don't even have a town's health group plan anymore. Yeah, and I mean, it may be at that point where we, it would be feasible to get one if you have enough budget. How many do you have to have to have a group? I don't know. I don't know. That'd be something we'd have what to ask. Well, Webster defined a group as. I don't know. You probably, I mean, it probably wouldn't be as good a value. The more you've got, the bigger value it's going to be. Sure. That's the pool spin. You know, it'll be healthy people. More. We'll all be older and more expensive. <laughs> And it does get more expensive, let me tell it you. It does, it does. And I told Peter, I said, I remember back when, um, I think one marketplace was what would be out like $400 per month. Hopefully it won't be that bad. So we're well, and that's around. another question too. I mean, I don't know, can we like sign people up in the marketplace, you know? Try to find them the best coverage for the best yeah, I don't know, and that's, that would be a thing we could ask them, but even too, because, I mean, I know they do that. And so, would you cover their, you know, if you're covering their healthcare coverage, that might be the best way of doing it. 
Shane's looking like I think he might throw the mic water. Talk about the future. I know. As long as I've got it, I'm happy. Right. Yeah, it's we're, we're going to keep you with it. It's a good thing to have. Yeah. Right. So, I think, let's just see if I get something back that's more definitive from her by our next board meeting. Okay. If y'all are good with the other things, um, the other proposed changes, I can put them in a, a resolution for the board meeting. Is that any objection you want to throw up? No chance. Nah. Okay. I'll let you get by with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like, though, you could probably, if she'll let you take out that first couple sentences, or that first sentence, and this probably just carried over from when we had our group calls. Yeah. I mean, I can see saying to somebody, hey, when you retire, you've not been here. But it does seem to be a little bit in contrast with the last one that says we're not giving you any benefits, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know. Well, I just we just got a bunch of questions. So. Well, yeah. So let's see if we get to get some answers, and then we'll yeah. we'll work on this one. It might take us a little more time than. Yeah. So we're just gonna do the others. Yeah, and that would be a different like one. Anyway, you shake it pretty much. Mm -hmm. Unless we get some answers before. Yeah, unless we get some answers before. Then okay. I'll let you know before that. Here, this is what Shane wants to know. Our early retirement incentive programs, legal in North Carolina. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many hours did you say you had in this week? Uh, 32 something or other about 8 a.m. this morning. Okay. Go home, Shane. You have comp time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you probably won't get to stay there until 3, though, would you? It's a mess. This is a real mess. But anyway. It's the mess that we've got. I know. Do we need to adjourn? Yes, we do. Can we just adjourn? We don't have to have a motion and all that. And then we can talk.